You know what's strange about RL? No one was interested in using it because of many problems that it has. For example, convergence issues, ensuring that reward modeling is proper, etc. And suddenly, everyone is using it. OpenAI, Anthropic AI, or be it any LLM-based company. In this video, we're gonna dig deep into RLHF, which uses proximal policy optimization along with other stages of LLM training. So let's get started. Now the first stage in LLM training is tokenization. In this stage we look into how to break the sentences into tokens. So byte pair is one of the most common tokenizer which is used in OpenAI as well. So let's look at how does it work. So if you have sentences like it is very unpleasant, it was hardly unseen, it made me unhealthy. So in these kind of sentences and we want to create a dictionary of a fixed size, right? So what you will do is first initialize with the letters. Then you keep combining the letters to form words so that they are more frequent. So in this, uh, you can see that it, 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 in all the three lines it is present. So you need to add that in the dictionary because it is a combination which is most frequent you keep adding such frequent combinations and then uh, you keep doing this until you hit the size of the dictionary which you have pre-decided okay so this is called byte pair encoding and it's very useful technique now you can see that the combination need not stick to just a sub word it can form a group of words as well which are very common while decoding it always gives the preference to the higher token size. Why? Because the lesser the number of tokens it is chunked into, the faster the LLM response is gonna be. The next stage is pretext learning. Have you seen how because we are typing day in and day out, we develop muscle memory where we know where the next key will lie? Similarly, we try to train the LLM to build a muscle memory where it knows what is the next word or set of words which will come given the previous set of words? This is done in a very inexpensive way without labeling where you take billions of articles and you make it develop this muscle memory by a surrogate task such as predicting next word or missing word etc which does not require labeling. The next step is supervised fine tuning. In this stage, we make the model mimic the human behavior. So if the human response to prompt X is Y, then the model should also respond Y. As you can guess, this involves a lot of labeling. One corollary I can draw is from image classification. So if there are thousand class, right, like ImageNet, we get uh, for a given image, you can have one of the thousand possibilities, right? Like it could be a cat, a dog, a truck, a car, anything. Similarly, in this case, given the input which contains the prompt plus the partial response, you can take the next token from the dictionary. So if the dictionary has 0.12 million tokens, your output size or the total number of classes is 0.21 million. So if you have large number of tokens, it's hard to train. But if you have billions of GPUs, then you can do anything. The last step is preference learning. So if LLM can have five possible responses, right? Human might have certain preferences towards hearing, maybe a polite tone or things like this. This is what human preference learning would allow it to do. First, you need to understand that LLM need not just give one kind of response. How is it possible? Because at each word, right, as I told, it has various possibilities, right? It's a probability space. You sample the first word. After that, you have again 0.12 million possibilities. Now here we have two choices, either to go with the optimal policy or to choose a greedy policy. Now, if you choose optimal policy, then you're sure that the output will be deterministic but most of the times we go with 
a slight variant of optimal policy which is greedy policy so in this case we would choose one of the few which are highly probable and then we keep constructing the responses so this way we can get n number of responses now since we have the pair which is input and multiple responses we can now use rlhf to figure out which response is preferred by humans the first step in rlhf is reward model training in this given a prompt we might have multiple responses like thumbs up or thumbs down which is preferred or unpreferred responses right so you have millions of such responses when someone is uh, getting like you can see this uh, like and like buttons right so you collect all these pairs now what you do is you make it a generalized model so for a unknown prompt also just like humans have a certain preference it will learn this preference by giving reward to the ones which are likely to give the preferred response then the less preferred ones right so this is a very simple thing where it mimics the actual human reward uh, this process is done using a simple log loss uh, you might say so uh, the value the reward value of positive should be higher than the one for negative as you can see in this loss equation right the next step in this is preference training why is it required why is a separate training required for llm this is because llm always predicts next token at a time not the whole response which is why you need to tune the llm to the overall response which you might anticipate now how do you do that is because you let it run the whole response you get the overall reward and then you tune through it but wait the tuning is not just based on the whole response but there are a few additional terms as well the first additional term that you will see is the kl divergence this ensures that uh, the model doesn't starts producing crazy different outputs it is still very similar to its original response so this is what kl divergence will ensure that it's not very different probabilistically than the Uh, original policy uh, the next term is entropy regularization this ensures that model does not becomes overconfident about its responses what i mean by overconfident is no matter what it will always produce one kind of response that is uh, uh, in probabilistic sense the entropy reduces a bit or it always prefers one uh, token as the next token as compared to any other token this is something which is a age old problem with reinforcement learning okay so by adding kl divergence and entropy regularization we do preference learning so just to summarize first we let it generate multiple responses then we train the overall reward model as i told where given a prompt and a preferred response it learns how to predict the reward okay so it predicts the reward of that response now once we have the reward model we use it as a stick like a carrot on a stick right to tune the actual llm so uh, at each stage of next token prediction we use this reward model to um, uh, tune it along with two other terms which i mentioned is kl divergence to ensure it's not too different from the original policy and the entropy regularization which avoids uh, making it overconfident around certain tokens than the others or reducing the overall entropy of the token probability distribution so that's it i hope this was useful and in the next videos uh, i'll also talk about dpo which is direct policy optimization and some of the other techniques as well such as rl oo which uses reinforce technique in reinforcement learning so see you next time and don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from crazy muse